Thank you very much. Very short. Three questions. Okay. Oh, come in. Let's let's get through this and we do a practical in class. Okay. Uh, this this month we have less practicals, so I thought, and we actually cancelled one practical, but I thought that it would be nice to still do it. So I brought the practical class. All right. So let's get through this and we do a practical in class. Okay. Um, explain with reference to a type of nuclear division why a patch of aspen trees is known as a clone. Okay. Oh, actually, oh, wow, this was just like what Raksha said this morning. Yeah. Um, they reproduce, uh, sorry, they are produced asexually using mitosis. They will be genetically identical to each other. I'm going to give you some tips on studying reproduction. You can write it down in your textbook so that you can include it in your notes eventually, your chapter set when it comes to quiz time. Okay? When you study the topic of reproduction, you must study it with mitosis and meiosis. In fact, mitosis, meiosis, we apply it in the topic of reproduction. Okay? Uh, these two topics, as a student, I used to study them together. I never separate. Then you won't get stuck if we combine these two topics together. What does the aspen tree look like? I also know what aspen tree is. I'm going to be going more. Okay? Uh, once again, uh, now I will upload the answers on Google Classroom. So if I'm too fast, you cannot see a whiteboard, access your phone or your uh, iPad. I'm curious what an aspen tree looks like. Aspen tree. Ooh. Oh, it's this one. You see phone, uh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the one. See, this feels like I go to a restaurant and they use it as their phone. Via vegetative reproduction. Sorry, vegetative propagation. Okay, next, suggest why it may be advantageous for aspen tree to reproduce via vegetative propagation rather than sexually. So why might this, this be an advantage? I think some of the points your friends raised on the is really on the whiteboard. Okay? If it's genetically identical, it can be a good thing if the parents are well adapted to the environment. And all the offspring will be well adapted to the environment. Uh, Whitney mentioned that once parents involved, yeah, that's great. Less time and energy is wasted. And also, from Whitney's point, you can elaborate. It's much faster. Rapid multiplic uh, multiplication. So, really, there are pros and cons. You can do things much faster with asexual, but you don't get as much variation. Yes, that might be an issue. Yeah. So actually, in this case, it is a good thing if I want to see it as a crop. Right? If I want to see it as a crop, then very good. But in a while, if I carry out asexual reproduction, uh, there may be overpopulation, overcrowding, and that may be an issue. But usually, uh, uh, this kind of form of reproduction takes place when resources are very abundant. Yeah. So there isn't a limitation. If we don't say that, then what do you think of it? Uh? Let's say for oh, rabbits, right, we produce super fast. Right? Okay. What if the uh, parent rabbit, right? Yeah, right, after there's a baby rabbit, right? But what if like they meet and they after they're both kids? Okay? What if the parent rabbit <laughs> and then the kid rabbit? 
Yeah, I get one hit. But sometimes this happens in a while, right? Okay, then I have a question for you. Is it sexual or asexual? Okay, it's still sexual, right? Okay, because it involves the fusion of a sperm and an egg. Even though this dude over here got the genes from you know, the parents. Okay? Remember I said, at the end of the day, when sexual reproduction takes place, they're just shopping cuts. I will shuffle a cut and pass it on to the next person at random uh, draw. So, kind of, if mom and or dad, you know, if they come together and reshuffle, right, you're kind of shuffling the same cuts around. Right? But that's not counted as asexual reproduction. Okay? Two parents involved, still sperm and egg uh, fusion. Uh, fusion. Okay, next scenario. You think, ah, uh, here is a flower. Okay, this is the female part, and this is the male part, the anthers and all, right, that produce pollen grain. Yes? Oh, uh, okay. Because, uh, at the end of the day, if, like, parent and child keep, or in the same family, uh, keep making each other and then producing kids from there, right, you are just shopping around the same cups, right? The our you know we have two sets of cards, right? Homologous chromosomes. For example, earlier on last time I showed you that our purpose represent different values of the same gene. Sometimes when you get two of the small caps together, they can arise as leaves on the surface. Yeah. But if it's just like that or like that, it's fine. Right? But imagine you keep shuffling the same cards over and over again, right? Eventually one of the kids, right, will get a combination where it is two small heads. Then a disease will arise. Yeah? But if you keep shuffling with someone outside the family, your chances are much smaller. If so, if I have a flower, okay, this is a plant, right? Then uh, the pollen grain from here goes to the stigma. Sexual or asexual?
greater genetic variation, better chance of at least one offspring surviving. Oh, that's a great question. Okay, we will deal with this question one day.
เสาสองหรือเปล่าเราอ๋อเริ่มต่อเลยนี่สีเชิดสวยกว่าอ everything is green and then randomly you can see one blue or yellow or red okay uh, we talk we are gonna spend the next hour on flowers because flowers are the plants reproductive organ yeah animal reproductive organs don't look so beautiful plants not right what <laughs> While waiting, let's do a quick recap. Shout out the parts of the flower that you are aware of. Okay, petals. Yeah, okay, here filament. Style. Stigma. Stamen. Ender. Anything else?
they are called sepals. These sepals are the things that kind of wrap around the, pl the flower before it blooms. Right? No flowers before they bloom, they are they still look green. And then after they open up, so that's what the sepal is. The next ring you find are the petals. The petals are often the ones that you see, you know of as the beautiful ones. Very colorful often. But not all the time colorful. Then after that we come to the male part. The male part, um, you call it, somebody shouted stamen. Stamen is made up of the anther as well as the filament. Y'all know this primary school? Oh, okay. Okay, stamen made up of anther and filament. Okay, so if this is the filament, this is the anther. Alright, then there is the stigma. Okay, stigma is the part that collects pollen grain, and then here's the style. Here's the ovary. Inside the ovary, you will find ovules. Okay, together, we call this a carpal. Okay, semen, N E N, men. So it's the male one. Get up. This one, I don't know how to draw a link, so it's just remember the opposite. Okay, so semen is for men, the male one. Okay, now let's have a look at the butterfly tea flower. Right? We are going to tear it apart. Okay, but I'd like you to pay attention to the video so that you have an idea of how we're going to tear it apart. And we're going to find all, the, all these parts. Right? After that, I'll give you time on your own to do it. So it's exciting, I spent the entire afternoon doing this yesterday. Hey, don't mind me, I just used the first tune you find on IMD. Okay, this is the scientific name of this flower. Okay. 
then you will peel off the two main petals. Oh, okay. If you can, you arrange it like I do, lah. Right? One, uh, arrange it the way I do. Uh, banner petal on the top, then two wing petals to the side. Once you remove two of the wing petals, you will then find the next layer of petals called keel petals. K E E L. They are the white petals found inside. These keel petals protect the reproductive parts. So once you open up the keel petals, you will actually find all the anthers, the filaments, the stigma, all inside. Okay, so this is one keel petal, then the other keel petal. The keel petals are slightly attached to each other.
Starting from the outside, uh, this one I'm going to write. Epicalyx. Anyone found insects in your flower? Uh. Yeah, one of the flowers that I opened up for practicing, I found a lot of pollinators inside. Can I, when you like to try to open up the ovary to see the ovules inside, go ahead. That part is really tough. I crushed all, most of the ovules that I tried.
Y'all try out, can you find that one free statement and then a nine fuse statement? Or can we try the free one? As with biology, the flower that you are working with today is not even a general model. Every flower looks quite different, right? What you see in the textbook, in fact, is really quite different from what you're handling today. The textbook shows you petals of equal sizes. Here you see that the petals come in all shapes and sizes, different colors even. The way your textbook shows that there are only how many answers, huh? Well, actually, they show quite a lot of answers there. Okay, answers. Always comes with 10. Right, so the model, the, what you're working with today, you see similarities to the model, but you also see differences. But that's what real life is. Yes. Uh, 
right? Except this is chapter eight of plants, and then the animal comes by and bites into the belly. Right? It's true, one, right? Yeah. Right. So animals come by, they bite into the ovary, the enlarged ovary. But that's how we disperse the seeds, right? Also, actually, a plant can be quite sad, right? A baby has to go through the digestive tract and shit out and after that. And a baby is kind of like a seed, right? In a plant kingdom. Okay, so uh, if you were to get a fruit next time, I would like you to look at the stem where it was connected to the plant. A lot of times you can find still on the stem petals and sepals. If you look on the opposite side, inside you look at the fruit, you will find. What part do you think you'll find? A flower. This is the, remember all fruits are in large ovaries. So what will you find on the opposite side of the, the stigma? Right? So if you look at fruits next time, on the opposite side, you will find a leftover stigma. Okay? If you look at tomato or apple, you'll find leftover stigmas at the opposite end. Okay? This is what I found quite interesting. Uh. Okay, so a uh, fruit pea flower, butterfly pea flower, actually comes from the same family of plants that are known as legumes, uh, pea plants. Right? So your sweet pea, all of them all come from the same family. That's why they come in pods. Right? In your SLS, and maybe in primary school, you still learn about calcifying flowers, and they are flowers that are insect pollinated or wind pollinated. Our flower here today, do you think it's an insect pollinated? A wind pollinated flower. Okay, what are the characteristics that make it an insect pollinated flower? Okay, uh, I share bright colors. Oh, hold on. Okay, I'm gonna write the point down. And then you find nectar guides. Nikita, you say? Stamen is inside the. Okay, how does that help in insect pollination? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Nikita said the stamen is, is kind of wrapped up in a few petals, right? So the insect needs to go inside to get it. But actually, if I'm an insect, right, why would I go to so much trouble to, to dig yeah, my way yeah, through? Because there are some rewards. Okay? There are some rewards. The rewards are often secreted by the. Sometimes the stigma part. Okay, the male and reproductive organs get rewards. Sometimes what bees and uh, pollinators are looking for are things like pollen grain and nectar. Pollen grain is rich in protein. Because after all, pollen grains are just cells, right? Lots of proteins. So pollinators go for them. Pollen grains, nectar, carbohydrates. Let me show see if I can show you some pollinators. Okay, these are the widespread pollinators. A lot of insects are pollinators. Oh, here's a pollinator. Monarch butterfly. Here's another pollinator. Can you see on its hind legs? Lots of pollen grain. Yeah. So this bee is storing pollen grain at the same time. It is also bringing some back to the, the home. At the same time, some of it may brush off on another plant. I want to show you what pollinators are capable of. Watch what happens when a bumblebee goes up to an insect pollinated plant or flower. You see this bumblebee uh, vibrating? Can you see the pollen grains just coming off the anthers? Yeah, those are pollen grains. You see how it's falling off and being trapped at its hind legs? The game is over here. Okay, so now they demonstrate without the bee. They take a tool that vibrates, and if you can see how much pollen grain can come out from the anthers when the insect comes by. Oh, I want to fall. Flowers. When we look at wind pollinator flowers, 
very often, it don't even quite look like flowers. Most of the flowers you see that you recognize as flowers are often insect pollinated. You see color, they tend to be insect pollinated. It's the ones that you don't pay attention to that are actually wind pollinated. You see by many wind pollinated flowers.
There are actually some characteristics that we can use to tell whether this plant used to be uh, a baby with two leaves or a baby with one leaf. Right? You read your textbook, the characteristics that help you identify a monocotyledon, the dicotyledon. Then you tell me, the blue pea, uh, the butterfly pea flower, is it a monocot or is it a dicot? Yes. Complete it. Oh. Okay, then we will think about all this in a while. Okay, they sound the same, right? Okay, so we'll think about it in a while. Okay, is our butterfly pea flower a monocot or dicot? Okay, who says monocot? Monocot. Okay, what are the traits that give pass it off as a monocot? Six petals? Yeah. Okay, no, uh, it's one petal, oh. two wings, two, yeah, right? So actually there are five petals. How many sepals? Five sepals used together. How many stamens? Ten. And then one corpel. So this is a? Yeah, uh, this flower is actually a dipod. Okay? So uh, that's how you can identify monocots and dipods. I like you are, um, after you learn this chapter, you go to our gardens, observe all the flowers. Some of our flowers have only male parts, some only female parts. Okay, next term, monoecious versus dioecious. A monoecious plant is one where on the same plant you can have both male and female flowers. Okay, a dioecious plant is one where the male and female flowers are found on separate ones. Okay? So this is another example of a monoecious flower where both male and female is the same flower. Okay? So these two are monoecious. This is dioecious. You notice the terms almost seem quite similar. Right? Monoecious Okay, so now let's think up. Uh, let's challenge your brain a bit. To be perfect is to be complete. Is this true? No. Right? To be perfect is to be complete. Must you be complete to be a perfect flower? Because you must look into the definitions of what perfect means, what complete means. Yeah? To be perfect is to be complete. True or false? Sometimes? 
Ah, okay. They can be, right? It's possible. You can be imperfect if you're incomplete, but you can also be perfect if you're incomplete. Yeah? This is our brain teaser. Next one. Monoecious plants always have perfect flowers. Okay? Monoecious plant means this plant contains both male and female parts. Dioecious plant, one plant will contain only male, the other plant will contain only female. So monoecious plants always have perfect flowers. Okay? So monoecious plants can have perfect flowers. They can also have imperfect flowers. Same plant, but the plant contains on one stem a male flower, another stem a female flower. Okay? This is also monoecious. A male flower and a female flower are the same plant. Well, uh, another way up. Uh, plants with perfect flowers are always monoecious. Or false. Plants with perfect flowers are always monoecious. True? What are perfect flowers? Have both male and female parts, right? So if your if your flower is perfect, your plant is definitely monoecious, right? Yeah. But a monoecious plant is not always perfect. Uh, you can contain imperfect flowers, right? Uh, wow, okay, so uh, you can play around with all these stuff to see if you really understand how what the difference is, yeah? Okay, uh, we also briefly touch on pollination. Pollination can be done by wind or by insects. I think you also covered a little bit of this in primary school. So this is nothing quite new. I like to instead go to a later part. Wow. If you all find butterflies, they are dead compared to me. My box of insects, right, are mostly brown and black. Plant 
a male part. Thank you. 